What is up guys, 70 Savage here. Today we are going to be going over how to design your van or RV or tiny home, whatever your living space might be in SketchUp. This is video number one of our next van build series. The sale of Vangelina Jolie, our previous van is still in the works. We are now accepting new name ideas for the next van. So when you're designing a living space, there are about a million things to take into consideration. And if you're anything like me, your memory caps out at about three. I think that SketchUp is the best way to get your ideas on paper and visualize the space that you want to create. SketchUp is a free, online CAD tool that you can use to design things in 3D. You can use SketchUp in the exact same browser that you're watching this video on right now. Unless you're watching it on a phone, not gonna work in that case. If you get really good at SketchUp, you can actually use it for professional fabrication purposes. In our case, however, we are not going to be doing that. We're gonna be keeping things very simple. Alrighty, so first things first, you can go to app.sketchup.com. You're gonna have to create an account and all that jazz. But once you are in this screen here, go into create new. And at this point, we are in our 3D space. First thing you're gonna wanna do is click on this little pizza looking icon here. I know it's the SketchUp logo, but to me it looks like a slice of pizza. And you're gonna wanna select your favorite unit of measure. Unless you live in the US, in which case you have to select your least favorite units of measure due to the incompetency of whoever invented feet and inches. I like to select this format of precision here. One decimal place is good enough for our purposes. And then you can go ahead and close this. We should never have to open that menu again. Alrighty, so now starting on the important stuff, on the left side of the screen here, you have a bunch of different tools that you can use. For our purposes, we are only gonna need a few of these tools. So the first tool that we're gonna cover is the orbit tool. It's the bottom one here. Go ahead and click that, and it allows you to orbit the model that you are currently making. While the orbit tool is being used, you can press shift to pan around. Between orbiting and panning, you will be able to put the camera wherever you need it. Next up, we have the select tool, which is on the top left. So the first thing we are going to use the select tool for is selecting this lady and fetus deleting her by pressing the backspace button. The next tool that we need is the rectangle tool. No surprise, it is the shape of a rectangle, not to be confused with the one that is the shape of two rectangles. I often accidentally click that one. I actually have no idea what that one does. So now that we've selected the rectangle tool, we can create ourselves a floor. Now, if we messed up the shape of the floor, we can either press the undo button or we can take our select tool, triple click it, and delete it as well. In my case, I looked up the dimensions of the van floor that I'm going to be building, and it is 165 inches by 69 inches. So the way to get that rectangle created accurately is you just draw the rectangle, it doesn't matter what shape, and then you can see on the bottom left of the screen here, the dimensions are showing. We can literally just type 69 by one, what did I say, 165, boom. We got ourselves a full on van floor. Another way to alter the size of the shape other than those two methods is to use the move tool. Well, a combination of the select and the move tool. So we're gonna take our select tool. We're gonna select just this line. Let's say we wanna make the van a little bit shorter. Select that line right there. Then we're gonna click the move tool on the left here and we can move this line in and out. It's really easy to accidentally change something on the wrong axis. So just make sure that it's sticking to the axis that you want. In our case, we wanna make sure that this shape is sticking on the green line if we wanna make it shorter or longer. Let's say we wanna make it exactly four inches shorter. We can use a similar typing method by just moving it a little bit in the direction that we want and then just typing four. The move tool is pretty versatile. You can also use it to move entire objects around. You do that by clicking the mouse button. You just mash your mouse as many times until the whole thing turns blue. You select the move tool and then you can move the entire object around. Once again, if you wanna move an object a very specific distance, drag it in that distance, and then type the distance that you wanna drag it, let's say five again, and it'll move exactly that amount. Now we have a floor, but how do we make things that are actually 3D? The way that I go about drawing 3D objects in general is I create the 2D version. Let's say we wanna create the cabinet. We create just the bottom section of the cabinet on the floor. We select that face by single clicking it. And then we're gonna use a new tool on the left-hand side here. This is the push pull tool. And since we have that face selected, 
we can pull that cabinet to create the 3D shape. The push pull tool is one of my absolute favorites because not only can you use it to turn that 2D shape into a 3D shape, but once you have a 3D shape, like let's say we wanted to make this cabinet two inches shorter, we simply select the face that we want to make smaller. We grab that push pull tool and let's say we want to make it three inches smaller. We type three, press enter, boom. All right, so that covers all of the tools that we're gonna be using on the left-hand side, but there's a couple more very important concepts to know for you to be able to use SketchUp to create your living space. All right, so you're super stoked. You just created your first cabinet, but you realized you wanna move it three inches to the left. So you grab your select tool, you triple click it. Wait a second, this thing fused to the floor. The entire world is just one big, object. It's literally impossible to just move the cabinet because everything else is coming with it. This, my friend, is where components come in. We need components to isolate the thing that we're making so that it stays its own thing and it doesn't interact with the other things. All right, so let's go back to square one. Let's just delete all of this stuff and start over. Grab our rectangle tool, create our floor, but instead of going on to make a cabinet, we're gonna grab our select tool, triple click this object that we made, and we're going to turn it into its own component. To do that, all you have to do is right click and select make component. Ours is the floor, and we press okay. We can do things like add that cabinet back and Damn it, double square tool. We can do things like re-add that cabinet that we just made by adding a rectangle, pull it up, triple click this guy, right click, make component, cabinet. And now when we select the cabinet, we're able to move it on top of the floor. So pretty much anytime I'm adding a new object to a model, I will triple click it and make a component so that it doesn't interact with any of the other objects that I don't want it to interact with. Whew. Okay, you have made it this far. I salute you. That's a lot of information. You deserve to have a coffee, depending on what time of day you're watching this video. I'm gonna crack one of these bad boys. Spin drift. So there is one last feature that you're going to need. That is called the tags feature. It used to be called the layers feature. It's now the tags feature. Pretty much the same thing. To demonstrate the tags tool, we're gonna to create all of the other walls for our van here. So how the heck are we supposed to create any components inside of this van now? Hint. It's tags. Oh, yeah. So let's go ahead and create a few new tags here. Create one for floor, one for roof, one for left wall, right wall. So these bare tags don't have any components in them yet. You can see if we're trying to hide and show them, nothing's happening. We have to actually select the component that we want. This is the right wall. We click the current tag and we select right wall. Now, anytime we hide or show the right wall, that component is hiding and showing in our model. And it allows you to get a pretty good perspective of what your space looks like with or without the walls. You can also add multiple components to a single tag. For instance, we can create a cabinets tag, and then we can have all of these cabinets that we just created underneath the cabinets tag, just like this. Everything as cabinets gets hided when we click or unclick the eyeball. So putting all of those tools together, you can make a pretty good model of what your build is gonna look like. This is where I'm currently at in modeling my next van build. We got the bed back here, some batteries, kitchen galley unit, couple cabinets, bench seat. I will use the tape measure in the app here. We actually didn't go over this tool, but you literally just drag it from point A to point B. And don't forget to press escape to prevent a line from being drawn on your model. And I will check the distance, in this case, 23 inches for this hallway. I'll take my tape measure stand up and be like, huh, could I walk in a hallway that's 23 inches? And then I pretty much just go from there. I'll also spend some time browsing the internet for the products that I want, such as this fridge right here. I'll find the dimensions of that product and then I can just add that component to the model so that I can account for the actual space that that thing will take up. So something you've probably been wondering this entire time, especially in the case of a van bill, is that vans are not perfectly square. If you really want to, you can take that into consideration here. You can search the SketchUp warehouse where they have a bunch of free models that other people have made and shared with the public. Even then, it's not gonna be perfect. It's very unlikely that person laser scanned the inside of their van, but that's not the point of this, right? We're not trying to make things exactly perfect. My preference is to just keep that in mind while I'm designing in the square idealistic box version. I don't put big things at the top and hope that they will magically fit even though there's less room at the top of the van in real life. So for y'all that are here for the next van build series, I'm gonna make 
make a separate video about this design and all of the features inside of it. I'm gonna ask you guys for your feedback. If you were just here for the SketchUp tutorial, then that's cool too. If you do wanna follow this van build series, slap that subscribe button below. If you like this video, I'd appreciate if you hit that like button below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.